Hey ceramic students, Mrs. New here. I'm excited for today's project. Um, I don't have any great examples of this one, unfortunately, but hopefully I will have some more examples when we're actually doing this project. So I don't have one for the video today, I apologize. But today uh, the lesson is gonna be about making um, winter gnomes. So gnomes have gained so much popularity um, in the home decor world lately and they're just super fun to make so we're going back to our cone templates the same that we used for our trees winter trees and we are going to select two different cones that kind of go together so let's talk about this when we build our gnome one of the cones is going to serve as the body of the gnome and one of the cones is going to serve as the hat of the gnome so I like these two in particular together because the body, as you can see, hopefully is a little more wide. And then the hat is a little bit more tall and skinny, okay? Um, the other two that I like together are kind of these two. So again, the body is more wide and then the hat is going to be more tall and skinny. So hopefully you can kind of see that. If you're not sure which ones to use, um, you can just ask me and I'll try to point you in the right direction. There are of course some other combinations in here that you could try, but um, mainly you want to look for one that's a little longer this way and one that's a little fatter and wider this way. And then if you pair those up, you'll have a good set for your gnome. So for this demo, I'm going to use the bigger set. So I'm going to put away the smaller set and I need a couple of slabs. So what I have done is I have rolled out some slabs. Sorry, I'm walking away from my phone here, so hopefully you can still hear me. So one of the slabs I have rolled out is gonna serve as the body. Now I'm not gonna put any texture on this one because I'm gonna cover part of it up. It's gonna have a beard and a nose and all of that stuff. So I don't really need any texture on the body. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out the cone. Okay, again, I always suggest that you kind of draw it on here first, carefully following the template and uh, make sure your slab is rolled out nice and even with the slab roller. Okay, make sure you're working with some nice, ooh, I kind of went off my, off my line there, but oh well. Um, make sure you're working with a nice uh, piece of clay that's well wedged, it doesn't have any air bubbles, okay, um, for slab work. So here is my cone, and just like in the tree project, I'm gonna carefully uh, take my serrated rib and some water I'm gonna score up the edge and put this cone together. And this is gonna be the bottom of my little gnome, the body and the bottom, I guess. Kind of pushing those together. Pinch, pinch, pinch that seam, just like when we were making coffee cups and I don't know, what else have we made? <laughs> the trees. Okay, so blending that together and getting your cone um, kind of put together, blend the inside run your finger along that and make sure that it's well blended together and that it's gonna to stay together nicely for you. Okay, as you're building your gnome, you could think about like, what personality is your gnome gonna have? Is it gonna be, have a beard? Is it gonna have braids? Like what kind of hair is it gonna have? What kind of face? So for my second slab um, cone, I have put some texture on this. And for this one, I used something that was a little more wintry. I found this little, um, it's like a balsa wood little piece and I just kind of pressed that in. I also have um, some different stamps that are a little more wintry. This one is like a poinsettia flower. This one's really pretty to stamp on. Just something different than a texture mat, or you could use a texture mat. But I would suggest texturing this slab before you cut out your hat. So this is gonna be the hat. So make sure that this fits on here. Find the, the fun part of your texture. I kind of like this right here. And again, drawing it on there first and then putting this together. And you're like, well, Miss New, why are you making two? Well, again, one's gonna be the hat, one's gonna be the body. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna actually stack these cones, one on top of the other to make this work. Okay, so there's my hat. I'm gonna save my little scraps because I might want these for my beard. I definitely want them for my beard. Um, I could save that nice texture I did. I could use that someplace else maybe. So I'm just gonna set that aside. I'm not gonna squish it up. Okay, so keep it nice. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my hat together. So when your hat is probably a little taller and narrower of a slab piece than the body of your gnome. So if you're struggling, if you start to bend this and it starts to crack 
Um, likely your clay is a little too dry for this because it does have to be pretty soft in order to make this happen. Okay, so for this one, I'm just gonna put these together super carefully. I'm being careful of my texture. I don't wanna mush, mush it up too much. So I just pinch, pinch, pinch along this edge, bring those two sides together. And you can see my top doesn't totally have, it's not totally enclosed. So I can do something fun with that later. I can stretch the clay and make it pointy. I could put a little pom-pom on top. You know, I could do something with that. So don't worry too much about the top yet, but do worry about this seam. So take a little time and blend this together. I'm just pulling some of that clay using my little finger erasers back and forth in the clay. I'm losing a little bit of the texture there, but that's okay. I can put that in the back and try to keep my pretty texture in the front of my gnome hat. Okay, and I'm gonna spend a minute and try to blend the inside too, okay? If it's really tall like this one, you could use a little wooden tool or a wet paintbrush and try to get in there and smooth that out. Okay, so before you go any further, I want you to look at your hat and your gnome and I want you to kind of make sure that they're gonna fit together nicely. So um, what I'm gonna do is a couple things. First of all, I wanna kinda go like that and I'm gonna look at it. Now this hat is a little basic. So what I'm gonna do is carefully start to pinch out the rim of the hat, okay? This is gonna do two things. I like the way it looks, number one. Um, it looks more gnomish, but is that a word, gnomish? Um, anyway, so I'm gonna kind of flare this out just a little bit and it also helps it um, stay you know, on there a little bit better. While I'm working on the hat, heck, why don't I just go ahead and start to kind of shape this top part. So I'm just gonna bring this closed. I'm just using my fingers. I didn't even put any slip really, but you could. And then I'm just gonna kind of shape this. So thinking back to our pinching projects, you know, just kind of shaping with your hands. You can decide if you want your hat to have like a really swoopy point at the top or just like a little bit of swoopiness. You might also think, where's the front of my hat gonna be? So for me, I kind of like this part. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn my swoopiness over this way. So have fun with the hats, right? That you can shape them and do some cool things with them, okay? All right, so now let's take a look. Okay, that's starting to look a little bit more like a hat now. I'm feeling a little bit better about that. So what I'm gonna do is set this on here and I'm gonna mark with a needle tool like where approximately that is landing on my bottom slab, okay? So I just put a couple markations. Now I'm gonna move it away. So now I can see about how far down that hat is gonna come. What do you think I'm gonna do next? You got it. I'm gonna slip and score this whole part. So I'm using my serrated rib. You could also use a fork and I'm gonna score this up. Now I'm just dipping it in the water right now. But when I actually go to attach this, I am gonna put some slip in here, okay? So I'm gonna do this whole section there. And guess what? I gotta do this too. This is a little tricky. So you gotta get up inside of here. You might use a fork or a needle tool, but you gotta do a little scoring up in here. So I'm gonna switch to a fork actually on mine. Grab a fork. Okay. Sorry for the pause, but that serrated rib was not fitting up in there. So lots of cross hatching and scoring. Okay, you get the idea. And then the other thing I would um, do is I would find some good slip. My slip jars are a little dry right now, but I would put a little bit of slip on either the hat or probably what's a little easier is the body of your gnome, okay? So putting a little slip around and uh, make sure that it's kind of wet and mushy. The slip I'm using isn't the best, but you get the idea, okay? So I would keep going with the slip and the score because I really want a good connection between the hat and the body. So if these have problems anywhere, that's usually where you run into some problems is the hat coming off of the body. Okay, does that make sense? So I would probably even put more slip on here, but for the sake of the demo, I'm gonna go ahead and make this connection. Okay, and I'm gonna push. So I'm kind of pushing, I'm holding my hat, and I'm gonna push from the inside out, and I'm kind of pushing the hat down because I really wanna make sure, like I said, that they're well attached to each other, okay? And I also um, feel like I wanna put this on a banding wheel, that would really help me, so I should probably go grab one of those. Okay, so now, 
kind of let's see what we got here. So now we've got kind of this bigger hat and we have the body and it's attached. Now, if you guys remember, there's gonna be some little bit of trapped air up in here. So another thing that's gonna be important is to go into the bottom here and make sure there's a hole right here and the bottom of your body into where that hollow part of the hat is. Does that make sense? No trapped air. So put a little hole up in there, but hopefully your hat's on there really good. So now I want you to look at this and decide which is gonna be the front. Where's the front of your gnome, okay? Because he needs a nose. I'm gonna grab a banding wheel real quick. Because I didn't have one for my demo. Okay, so where's the, where's the nose gonna be? And I like to kind of set it on a banding wheel and kind of look at it and decide, you know, like my hat right here is kind of ugly, I gotta fix that. So I think I'm gonna make this the front. Wherever the front is gonna go, you're gonna lift up that hat just a little bit and make a little, I don't know what you call this, <laughs> a little part that goes up, okay? And I'm gonna put my nose there. And again, this is just my gnome. Your gnome might look a little different and that's great. I'm just showing you kind of the basics of getting this project going. So if you've made the teardrop tree, you're familiar with making a little teardrop, okay? So this is gonna be my nose. And I just do this kind of teardrop nose. You could make a more realistic looking nose if you wanted to, but I'm gonna slip and score. And I'm kind of shoving the, the pointy part of the teardrop like up into the hat a little bit. Okay, I can push from underneath and make sure it's on there. And I kind of swooped up the hat a little bit just to give me some room for the nose. So if you wanted to, you could give it some nostrils. You could actually, you know, kind of flare it out a little bit or push something in here to make it look more no like a nose, or you could just leave it more like a little snowball. And I can see some of my slip and scoring marks and my fingernail marks and stuff, and I'm gonna clean all that up later with a wet paintbrush. But now it's got a nose. Okay, so if you know anything about gnomes, what is it missing, you guys? It's missing a beard. It needs a beard or some facial hair or something. So I'm gonna take... Uh, my scrap slab piece and I'm going to thin this out a little bit because I don't want a beard that's super thick so I'm just going to thin it out and have an air bubble in there and I'm going to think about this shape now I don't have a lot of room here but the the beard can kind of come down a little bit so I want to think about like what kind of shape is this going to be I think I want it to be kind of a a pointy beard, I guess, and kind of coming down. Ooh, I think that's too big. So let's make it a little smaller. Okay, so kind of play around with how this beard is gonna work. And it can stick out a little bit. I feel like mine's sticking out a little bit too much. All right, you could even do a mustache or something else. But ooh, that's looking pretty good there. I kind of like that shape. So as you know, to give it some texture, I'm gonna kind of texturize this beard before I attach it. So I'm just gonna use my needle tool and I'm just gonna kind of hack at this thing and make a furry little texture on this beard. Like I said, you could even do like a little mustache that comes out either way. You could do braids on the side, that's really cute too. But whatever I do, I'm gonna slip and score it. So I texturized the little slab. Okay, that's my beard. And now again, I'm gonna kind of score this up I'm using a little water, maybe a little slip. Being careful of my nose. Okay, I don't want it to mess up my nose that I put on there. That's why the banding wheel is kind of helpful because you can get down an eye level. And I'm gonna kind of just put that little beard on there, push that on there. Okay, everything that you're attaching, really slipping and scoring, using a wet paintbrush and going around everything at the end, but I kind of like that little beard. I think it's really cute. So hopefully you guys can see how cute this is looking. Now, I don't put eyes on my gnomes. I, I just find them distracting, um, but you could add a couple more details. So let's talk about braids. If you wanted to do braids, which um, are really fun as well, um, here's a quick and easy way to do them. So what I would do for braids, or you could do a different slab hairdo, but I just want to show you braids really quick. So what I do for braids is I make a coil, okay? Kind of roll this out. And then what I do is I actually don't braid it like with three pieces, I, I cheat a little bit. I kind of roll it in half like this and then I just twist, okay? And I know, I know it's not quite a braid, but you know, it works, <laughs> it's a little faster. So again, up to you. 
Um, so I'm gonna cut it here. And then this part of the braid, actually, I think I'll do this part of the braid. I wanna make it look a little bit more, you know, furry or whatever, so I could rough this up a little bit, kind of like I did with the beard and kind of make it look more shaggy. Or you could take three coils and actually braid them, okay? And that's fine too. But let me just show you how this, this looks a little long for mine, so I'm gonna trim it down kind of show you how this can look if you do the I feel like I want the edge to be textured too okay all right so same thing I'm going to make this a little thinner here and I would kind of shove it up underneath the hat you kind of see how that would work so you could do two braids on either side so that's really cute too and you could even make a pairing of them you know like a, a little set would be really cute um, I'm going to take this braid off because I'm going to have mine just be a beard, but I would do some wet paintbrush and some fine detailing. Now, the other thing is I've been handling the hat so much that I kind of lost my texture. So I might want to go back in with my little tool, whatever I used, and maybe kind of repress some of this texture in because I really want um, it to look holiday-ish. And I also want to add some details. So one of the things that can be really fun is putting something on the hat that sort of reflects, um, I don't know what style you want. You could put a little present, you could put a little candy cane, you could put whatever. I think for mine, I'm just gonna put a couple little leaves and I'm gonna put like some holly berries. I feel like this time of year, you know those bushes with the red berries, I think they're called holly. Um, so I'm just gonna make a couple little like leaf shapes. And again, I'm doing this really fast. If I was doing this for real, I would take a lot more time. But I'm just gonna do a couple little leaves. And then inside of that, and I'll show you this in a minute, I'm gonna make a little set of berries because I wanna paint them red. And I think I'm gonna make the, the hat white. I'm kind of thinking about my colors. And then I think I would make the body of it kind of a beige color. I don't know, or whatever maybe green. All right, so see how cute that is. Um, now the body here on the sides, you could also add things here. So maybe you wanted to add, ooh, I have an idea. What if we added some ears? So I could take a little scrap slab. I mean, it is a gnome after all. Maybe he needs some gnome ears that are sort of sticking out the side. Ooh, that could be really cute. Um, I like the little ear idea, that could be fun. Some little elf ears. By the way, a trick if you wanna make two elf ears that are the same, take one elf ear, put it on top of your slab, and then trace out a second elf ear. And that way, they look the same, because it's really hard to sculpt two things that are exactly the same. So now at least you have a base. Look at this, now they're kind of the same, okay? So little elfy ears could be so cute. Oh my gosh, you guys, I think I might have to keep the ears. That's adorable. Um, and you could do little hands and little arms if you wanted to. I don't usually do that on mine. I usually just maybe stop with the ears, but you could do whatever you want. This is like fun and creative. So have fun with it. Couple things to remember, blending and slipping and scoring everything on there really, really well, okay? Making sure when you stack the two cones, there's lots of slip and score up in this area. Make sure you have that hole in case you have any uh, trapped air in there. And really take your time on these and make them unique and fun. Start out with a couple sketches and ideas before you begin. It's a really fun project. Have fun with this one, you guys. Winter gnomes! Yay! All right, have a good day. Bye!